What's up, everybody? Welcome to Hammer Down Motorsports. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Steve Fast, and behind us, we have the 2019 Rebel. Now, as you can see, we do have a little bit of winter weather going on. This is the best I could plow this after the freezing rain kind of locked in all the snow that we got, which wasn't enough to go snowmobiling, unfortunately. And we don't get a whole lot of sun on our driveway, so it is a bit of an icy mess. But with that aside, we do have some stuff to load up in the back of the truck for the next stage in this build. So let's get it loaded up and then we can reveal it to you guys once we got somewhat part of this piece of the puzzle put together. All right. So even in the snowy weather, we can still get some stuff done on the truck and I'm very excited to get to the next stage. But this is just another little thing we got to do to get it where we want it to go. So, as we approach the bump in the driveway, let's have a little listen. It was sort of there. It was actually a little bit worse earlier this morning. So we definitely haven't solved the mystery just yet, but we'll get there one little bit at a time. So I know for sure the body bolts are tight now, and I know that the sway bar links are tight, but it doesn't say that the sway bar links are good. There might be a possibility that the one side maybe has the, the small socket or something like that has an issue going on with it, and maybe it's clunking in and out. I know other people have said they've had that issue with their trucks. And with mine, I, I actually think that theirs were loose. Mine definitely aren't loose, but I did get a pretty good clunk this morning. Unfortunately, I was not filming at the time, but we are gonna be taking that all apart at some point. A little hint about what we're gonna be doing here in the very near future. So definitely stay tuned for that. Also, one thing I wanted to share with you guys is I did have that wind whistle on the passenger side and it was coming out of the far vent when I'd have it on like level five. So let's turn it to level five right now. We got the fan going, level five, no wind whistle whatsoever. So I did listen to you guys in the comment section and there's the little kind of knob on the bottom right below the vent that it allows you to open and close the amount of air coming out of that vent. And if you have these kind of in the middle, they will give you a wind whistle. So I opened it up all the way and the wind whistle went away. So if you're having that issue, definitely try that. Definitely work for my truck. Also something that has been a bit of a concern in the comment section and just kind of overall on the forums for these fifth generation rams is does the ac work well in the summertime and there's been people even with youtube channels saying you know they live in texas and it's just it's not as cold as what you would find in a regular vehicle and from my personal experience up here in pennsylvania i've never really had an issue and we get temperatures up to around 100 degrees sometimes in the summertime on like a really hot day and i just hit the command start let the truck run for five minutes or so and it was nice and cool inside. I never had any issues whatsoever. And that's a question I got asked a lot early on. But there is actually another YouTuber that I follow that lives in the Middle East with a black Rebel. And the name of his channel is Snowcat SRT. So if you guys haven't checked him out, definitely check him out as well. He has an awesome Hellcat. He's got some other crazy builds going on as well as his Rebel build. But he lives in, I'm not sure exactly the country, but it is fairly close to Dubai from what I understand. And I sent him a message the other day just kind of asking him how his AC works. And he said he hasn't really had any issues whatsoever. It's maybe not as good as every other vehicle ever made out there. Like he said, some of the, the Japanese vehicles were a little bit colder as far as the AC goes. But as far as his truck's concerned, he had no complaints and they get temperatures up 105 degrees Fahrenheit and stuff like that on a regular basis. So I guess he'd probably be the one to ask about the AC performance and yeah, I guess there's no real issue there unless you're super, super fussy and you need to be having a brain freeze when you drive your vehicle. I don't know, but as far as I'm concerned, it works just fine. Also a question for you guys on Snowcat SRT's Rebel, he's got a 19 model and he said when he's going about 140 kilometers an hour, which is I think a little over 80 miles per hour. He's got a pretty significant wind whistle and he said it's really annoying and it doesn't really do it when he's going straight. It's just kind of when he turns the truck a little bit and I don't have that issue with mine. I can go, well, I guess if, I, if the speed limit was 140 kilometers an hour, I could go 140 kilometers an hour and I don't have that issue whatsoever. So just kind of throwing that out there. If you guys have any experience with that whatsoever, maybe could help him out with getting that resolved. But yeah, as far as my Rebel goes, we are pretty good as far as wind whistles go. So at least that's a plus. 
I wish I could say the same for my cracked rear window frame. And just on the topic of drivers in the area, we got this Mercedes behind me and you can tell it's one of those, I don't know, office stiff type people driving a Mercedes SUV. And you know, the guys that wear the trench coats and think that they're better than everybody else kind of thing. And this guy's been just like going in and out of the right lane. Like there's a bunch of slow traffic. So basically you're just staying in the passing lane via because we are passing people at all times. And he just thinks that he's gonna get an opening where he can just cut me off. But there's just, there's no way that's gonna happen, dude. This is as fast as it's gonna go. Just stay in this lane and follow along. Just because you think that you're better than everybody else doesn't mean you can drive faster than everybody else. All right, so here we are at K&W Tire in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We're about to get something special for the Rebel. So we were able to fit them all in the back of the truck and in a minute we're going to show you what's in these boxes so this is grant so if you want wheels i just gave it away wheels and tires done definitely come check them out at k and w tire in lancaster pennsylvania it's nice and warm in here is that the approved method of opening a box sturdy old razor blade yeah no doubt so this is what we got in the box wait for it oh yes we've got the kmc xd rockstar twos and yes drop in the comments what you guys think of this and i know they've been done many many times by many of the jeep community but as far as the wheels that i looked at there's no better fit for this truck for me and wait till they're on the truck it's gonna look absolutely amazing and if you guys are wondering what kind of tire setup we're going with, well, we're going with the classic tried and true Toyo Open Country MT on a 35-1250 R20. Just like that. And if you're wondering what these wheels look like on a Ranger, well, there it is, 35 inches of glory. And then over here we have our center cap. You can see we have the matte black with a gloss black star. And actually on the wheels, there's the little spokes are actually flat black. And then the wheel itself is more of a satin. And I do have plans for a little customization on these center caps as well. And over here they have the Hunter state-of-the-art alignment machines. So once we get the ability to fit these larger tires, we can bring the truck back set it up here and get it all lined up and here we've got a close up view you can really see the difference between the flat and the satin and i'm really loving the look with these meaty tires on these 20 inch wheels so if you're thinking a 35 is not that much bigger than a 33 here is a 33 you can see how much gap we do have in our wheel well area and over here we lined up the 35 to our front end and as you can see there is a pretty big difference. You go over here, you can see the height difference, kind of where my hand is, top to bottom. We are definitely gonna need to raise this truck up quite a bit to be able to make this fit. But when it's done, it's gonna look absolutely awesome. Look at that. One and three quarter, one and a half. You're not gonna get that for much, much. On a 35, yeah. Normally it's like three and a half, four. So Toyos always, that's the reason I get Toyos because I've never really had issues with balance on these. All right, I lied. We have a bunch of weight on these ones, but Sorry. that's kind of the mud, mud tire life. We're, we're getting pretty close here though. Yeah, we're like half an ounce out. We're not gonna notice that with a 35, so let her buck. So obviously we're not gonna be able to put all four of the big mudder tires on today because well, the probably in the front, we're not gonna be able to turn it. So we're gonna have to lift this truck up a little bit before everything's gonna fit. But we're just gonna mock up one of the rears just to see how it looks. All right, so she fits. Look at that. And we're not really, we're not sticking out at all. So we're with a negative 18 offset on these and we're just grazing the outside of that mud flap. So this is gonna be looking pretty good. What do you think? It's gonna be for sure. So now we're going to test out the ram box bed and see if we can fit four 35s in the back without too much difficulty there isn't a whole lot of extra room but the tonneau cover isn't helping us out because there is a little bit of the bed taken up with that 
And I think if that wasn't there, these would both sit flat pretty much with no issue. There we go. That's about as good as it's gonna get. Big thanks to Grant, KW Tire, Lancaster, hooking it up. All right, so we have our tires and wheels in the back of the truck. We just gotta do the lift kit so it all will fit. And I need to get some hub centrics for these wheels because the center of the hub on these is quite a bit larger than the factory. And you wanna put that kind of stress on your studs. Also, I just got a phone call from New Holland Dodge. They have the back window authorized. So they're putting a whole new window in the back of the truck within the next 90 days or so. They said parts are on back order for these because well, obviously it is a common problem. So we're gonna get the updated version. It's gonna be all good to go and we should have no more cracks. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And as always, keep that hammer down.